everybody's talented. That's why they're drafting you. He said, but the, really the people who separate themselves from the good to the average are the players who can, it's two to one mental to physical. So the guys who can take all their self-study, their, their information they're getting from their coaches, from their peers, and apply that back in practice every day and have that recall back in the games, week in and week out, those guys separate themselves from the average player to the good players to the great players. And when he first said it, I'm like, yeah, blah, 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 whatever. He hired a guy named Rod Russ, and we had our walkthroughs inside our locker room. And I wasn't paying attention. And Rod Russ cussed me out. You MFR, you better listen to me. And then after the walkthrough, I went over to him, I apologized. And he, he basically challenged me to become a better player than just an athlete. And he said, if you really want to learn the game, you come with me, I'll take you in my room, and I'll show you what offenses do to defensive players or defenses in general to disguise things. And he shows me how they, it's irrelevant of the personnel groupings, but they'll run the same plays from different personnel groupings and they'll build the formation differently by moving, this time it's a receiver, this time it's a running back, this time it's a tight end, but in this final formation, they're gonna run this route. And that green light clicked on. I was like, you have to be kidding me. This is all they do? Here is Rod's first career NFL interception. Now, after that, so I'm pointing as I'm going in. I'm holding up the football and I'm pointing. So I go to the sideline. And me, Joe Green, is our defensive line coach. Everybody's patting me on the back and giving me high fives. And me, Joe, comes over and goes, don't ever do that again. I just look at him and go, yes, sir. I mean, because he's mean. I mean, it's like I'd heard mean, like mean Joe, when he shut his door to his defensive line room, I would hear objects being thrown against a wall. Because could have been bodies. It could have been. <laughs> Everything's clicking. Making the Pro Bowl, you've kind of unlocked this secret to playing corner, to playing defense. And then you find out your father is ill. So my dad had, I mean, it runs in the family, uh, high blood pressure uh, runs in the family. Um, sugar diabetes runs in his family. Heart disease runs in my mother's side of the family. She's diabetic, but my dad had uh, high blood pressure. And so it was in 92, we were in spring ball, and I get a phone call. And he just had an aterism, and uh, he did come out of it, he was fine. So I left right after practice, drove back to Indiana. Um, he was good. Um, probably three or four days later, um, he's still in the hospital and something went back through his brain. Some type of little virus came back into his brain and kind of wiped him out. And <clears throat> he was on a ventilator. Uh, we chose to, to pull him off um, two days after. Um, How tough that decision? I didn't want, didn't want to pull him off. I wanted like, I'll pay whatever it is. I don't care how much it is. This, maybe he'll come back. And the rest of the family didn't want to, so we eventually just pulled the plug. That was tough. Did you get a chance to say goodbye? No, uh, not really. Not the way, not the way I wanted to. You got a chance to take care of him, though. We had a chance. I took care of him, took care of my mother. Um, as soon as I signed my contract, I brought him a house. Um, went back there, got him a car, said, you don't got to work again. But you have these Pro Bowl seasons. You guys are starting to flirt with being good in the playoffs. Then you're named the NFL Defensive Player of the Year. I take all the individual accomplishments with a grain of salt because it happens every year. Somebody's going to have that award. Yeah, but it happened to you. It is, but I'm saying you, you, you like the, you love the award. You love the uh, people to recognize you that you're doing good. Um, I don't take it too much more serious than that. When does it start to sink in? I got to win a championship here. This is this other stuff is nice. I got to win a championship. 
I mean, I was, I was in Pittsburgh and... And they expect it, championships. They do. Um, our offense wasn't, it was all about Pittsburgh, it was all about the defense. Um, Chuck retires, Dick LeBeau comes in, Bill Cower comes in, Dom Caper comes in. It's really the defense we start playing is really Dick LeBeau's defense, but Dom Capers is the defense coordinator and Bill's the head coach. And it really fits who we are because we were so athletic. We just couldn't put it all together. And then... Um, when you, know, you lose in the AFC title game, yeah, it's just within your reach. The next season, first game of the season, it's the Steelers against the Lions. And this is what happens. The Detroit Lions from the 38. Mitchell again swings it out to Barry Sanders. Sanders needs to get to the 45, and he gets to the 46, and he picks up a first down. There's a player's down. That is Rod Woodson for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We played on AstroTurf. That's like the old, old AstroTurf. And stupid me, and normally what I would do, if I'm wearing new shoes, I would break them out middle of the week, wear them for three or four days to get them broken into the ground so they're not so sticky. That was a hot day. I broke them right out of the box. Never done it in my whole career. Never did it after that. And then when I went to plant, as he's cutting back in, I went to plant, and as I hit, my foot stayed straight like this, and my knee turned. And as I felt it, I tried to jump off of it, but it was too, I heard, I heard a pop. I never had an injury before that. And when I, I, I mean, I got up and walked off, and they're like, what happened? I said, man, I think I, I think I popped my ACL. I said, I'm not really sure. I've never had an injury, but I just heard something inside of me. Just, Pah. I went to the doctors. Doctor said, it's six months to a year. I looked at Coach Coward and I said, four months, playoffs. I can make it back. And he's like, what? I was like, Coach, I can make it back and play. Leave me a spot open. I mean, one thing I love about Bill, he, I mean, he had enough respect for me and uh, he left that spot open. So we had my butt off for four months and we were good enough to keep playing and to, to win and to get to the Super Bowl, not knowing if I ever get to another one. This is how the Super Bowl turned out. after that knee surgery after the first game of the season, and he made one of those typical great corner plays of his. Oh, Touchdown! Watson. Final score, Dallas 27, Pittsburgh 17. How tough was that loss? Oh, it's always tough when you, know, you, you get to that point because you want to be the best, and that confetti is somebody else's. It's not your confetti. So now you're 31, and Steelers' contract offer is not great, and you decide you're going to walk. On draft day, I get a phone call. I'm not going to say the name of the person. I get a phone call and say, are you going to take our deal? 